Welcome back everyone. In this video we are going to start talking about logical equivalence and logical implications. Um, so two statements that have the same truth values are called logically equivalent statements and we actually saw that in the last section. We saw P implies Q and the contrapositive not Q implies not P that they were both true at the same time and false at the same time. So you could say that these two statements are logically equivalent. You could replace one of these statements with the other and it would have exactly the same meaning. The way that we write logically equivalent looks kind of like a biconditional, but remember a biconditional is just a single line double-headed arrow, whereas logically equivalent is a two-lined double-headed arrow. And there is a difference between the two. There is a difference in meaning between logically equivalent versus the biconditional. Um, so if you are looking at a biconditional, something like P if and only if Q, that's a statement. It's something that might be true, it might be false, depending on whether P is true or Q is true or both or neither. Whereas something like P logically equivalent to Q is telling you that P and Q always have the same truth values, that they're either both true or they're both false. They're never having different truth values at the same time. Uh, so there is a nice little connection between the two, though, between logical equivalence and biconditional, because if P and Q are either both true or they're both false, then that means P, if and only if Q, would have to always be a true statement. If P is true whenever Q is true and P is false whenever Q is false, then P, if and only if Q, would be a true statement. In other words, it would be a tautology. And so that kind of gives us a hint as to how we show that something is logically equivalent. If you wanted to show that P and Q were two logically equivalent statements, you could just look at P if and only if Q and ask yourself if that's a tautology. And if it's a tautology, if it's always true, then P and Q are logically equivalent. All right, so first one, a fairly fast and easy one, we're going to show that the negation of the negation of P and P itself are logically equivalent. And I'm going to do that by showing negation of negation of P if and only if P, showing that this biconditional is always true, showing that that's a tautology. So we have our truth values for P, our truth values for negation of P are just the opposite. And if you negate the negation of P, you get the opposite of its truth values. And if we look at the if and only if statement, in the first row, both are true. In the second row, both are false. So in both cases, the biconditional happens to be true. And so because this is a tautology, because this biconditional is a tautology, then you know that the negation of the negation of P is logically equivalent to P itself. And this means, and we're going to see examples of this later on, this means that if you had a statement that involved negation of negation of P, you could replace it with P, since they both have the same meaning, they both have exactly the same truth values. All right, uh, we saw laws like this before in set theory um, called De Morgan's laws, and they were similar sorts of laws talking about how negations work with unions and intersections. And here this is how negations work or with or or and statements. So the first one that we want to show is that the negation of P or Q is equivalent to the negation of P and the negation of Q. In terms of set theory, the one that the De Morgan's law that we're talking about here would be the one that says A union B complement is equal to A complement intersect B complement. That's the De Morgan's law for sets, the equivalent one. We're going to show that this logic statement, not P or Q, and not P and not Q, that those two are logically equivalent to each other. And we just build things up. P or Q is true whenever they are both true or one of them is true, and it's false when they're both false. And we work up the negation of P or Q, opposite truth values of P or Q. Now the, uh, neg uh, now the negations of P and the negation of Q 
and negation of P and negation of Q. They're only true when they're both true, which is in the last row, and it's false otherwise. And now, if we're looking at our truth table, we can see that for the negation of P or Q, and negation of P and negation of Q, they have the same truth values, so that means that they must be logically equivalent to each other. Negation of P or Q should be logically equivalent to negation of P and negation of Q. Now, of course, you have, just like we did for De Morgan's laws for sets, we have De Morgan's laws uh, for logic there's two of those as well, just as there was for set theory. So this one that we worked on was how negations work for or statements. There's also one for how negations work for and statements. And just as it was with the negation of negation of P, the previous example where I said you could now replace that with P, here now whenever you see something like negation of P or Q, you could re now replace that with negation of P and negation of Q. And we're going to kind of do that here in this uh, with words that we have a, a sentence, I like to sing and I like to dance. And if you're thinking in terms of symbols as I like to sing being the statement P and I like to dance being the statement Q, that this is really a, a P and Q statement. And we're looking for the negation of this P and Q statement. And we know from the previous slide that by De Morgan's law, that would be logically equivalent to negation of P or negation of Q. So that means that if we wanted to type this out as a sentence, what is it? What is the negation of I like to sing and I like to dance? P is I like to sing, so I don't like to sing. Or negation of Q. Q is I like to dance, so negation of that is I don't like to dance. And that makes intuitive sense because if you're thinking about the statement I like to sing and I like to dance, that means you like both activities. So if you wanted to negate that, you would have to not like one or the other or both activities. So you either don't like to sing or you don't like to dance or both. And that's exactly what we have. I have for part B, I will make tacos or I will make pizza. And if I have those as my statements P and Q, then this is a P or Q statement. And if we wanted to negate that, De Morgan's law says that's logically equivalent to negation of P and negation of Q. And so again, if I were to think about expressing this in words, if I have I will make tacos or I will make pizza and I wanted to negate that, the negation would be negation of P, I won't make tacos, and negation of Q, I won't make pizza. There we go. All right. Let's do some more truth tables uh, to show that one statement is logically equivalent or not to another one. This one, we're trying to decide whether one statement is logically equivalent to the other. Uh, and my plan here is similar to the negation of negation of P. I have taken the one statement and the other and put them in a biconditional. And I want to see whether or not that's a tautology. If that if and only if statement is a tautology, then the two parts are logically equivalent to each other. So I'll look at P or Q and not P if and only if negation of P and Q or P. That's my statement A. And if this turns out to be a tautology, if it turns out to always be true, then good for me. My two statements are logically equivalent. And if not, then they're not logically equivalent. So let's start putting some things in. We have P or Q, true in the first three places and false in the last. Negation of P, false in the first two rows and true in the next two. And then now we're taking those two red columns and making an AND statement out of them both. And in the first two rows, they're not both true. In the third row, they're both true. In the last row, they are not both true. So there we go. There's the truth values for P or Q and not P. And it looks like the only time it's true is when P is false uh, 
and Q is true. Now let's do the same sort of thing here for the second part, building up P and Q, only true in the first row and false otherwise. So the negation of P and Q would be false in the first row and true otherwise. And then finally, negation of P, or, uh, P and Q or P. And so as long as negation of P or and Q is true, or P is true, or both, then this will be a true statement. In the first row, P happens to be true, which makes it a true statement. In the second row, they're both true, which makes it a true statement. In the third row, negation of P and Q is true, which makes it a true statement. And in the fourth row, we have negation of P and Q is true, which makes this a true statement. Okay, so last part for us to do was to look at the, the statement A, which is P or Q and not P, if and only if negation of P and Q or P. And so if we're looking at this, they don't always have the same truth values. In the first row, they have different truth values, so the if and only if statement is false. Same with the second row. Same with the last row. It's only in the third row where they have the same truth values. So what I'd say as a conclusion is, since A is not a tautology, then they are not logically equivalent. To show not logically equivalent, you could draw the logically equivalent sign with a slash through it. Um, so you could write P or Q and not P, not logically equivalent to P and Q or P. All right. So we figured out that those two statements are not logically equivalent to each other. Um, here are two statements that are logically equivalent. The implication P implies Q and the disjunction not P or Q, these two things are logically equivalent. And we'll show them, and it's a quick one to show. We know P implies Q will be false when P is true and Q is false, and it will be true otherwise. And if we get the negation of P happening, then negation of P or Q will be true when one is true, Q is true here, or when both of them are true, which happens to be in the third row, or one of them is true, which happens to be in the fourth row when not P is true. In row two, when they're both false, not P is false and Q is false, the OR statement is false. And then if we're looking at our truth table now, we can see that P implies Q and not P or Q, that they always have the same truth values. They're either both true at the same time or false at the same time, which means that the by conditional P implies Q if and only if not P or Q is a tautology. And so th since that's a tautology, then you can say that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. All right. So this is kind of a nice example. I've said in the last few things when De Morgan's Law and with double negation that you could replace the double negation of P with P. Um, and this is something where we're going to put this idea in action of using logical equivalence to rewrite a statement. So here we have the statement negation of P implies Q, and we want to rewrite this without the implication, without the if-then part in it, which if we're looking back at the previous slide, we know that we can replace the implication P implies Q with the disjunction not P or Q since they're logically equivalent to each other. So that's what I'll do here. I'll say that this is logically equivalent to the negation of not P or Q. 
And then now I'm going to use De Morgan's Law because remember we had a De Morgan's Law that dealt with negations of one statement or another. And for that De Morgan's Law, it was that you would have the negation of the first statement. So the negation of the first statement and the negation of the second statement. All right, so I've applied here De Morgan's Law. I'll just make a little note to myself. That was De Morgan's Law. And then for the last part here, the negation of the negation of P, that is logically equivalent to P, so I can replace this negation of negation of P with just P. So if you're looking at negation of P implies Q, a way that you could write that equivalently without an if-then statement would be P and negation of Q. All right, let's do one little last thing, which is to talk about logical implication. And it was a similar sort of an idea as logical equivalence, where if you had an if and only if statement that was a tautology, then you had that that meant that the two parts were logically equivalent to each other. We have a similar sort of thing about just a plain old implication. If you'd have the, the implication P implies Q, and if that is a tautology, then that means that P logically implies Q. Whenever P is true, it means that Q has to be true. Because remember, for an implication, whenever the hypothesis is true, the conclusion has to be true if you want that implication to be a true statement. And similar sort of an idea here, the notation is that for a logical implication, it's a double-lined, single-headed arrow pointing to the right. So just like with logical equivalence, how if you could show an if and only if was a tautology, you got logical equivalence. Similarly, if you can show an if-then statement, is a tautology, you get logical implication. So here, this is what we're trying to show. We have the statement P Im implies Q and not Q, showing that that logically implies not P. And so what I've done is I've set up the implication. P implies Q and not Q implies not P. And now if I can show that that statement, which I've called A, if I can show that that's a tautology, then that means that I have that the one statement logically implies the other. So now let's do that. We've got our logical implication P implies Q, which is true in this row, false in this row, true in these rows. Not Q, we'll take the negations of the statement, uh, negation of the statement Q, there we go. I have P implies Q for a second time. I have no idea why I must have put that in by accident, but we'll fill it in anyhow. Why not? And P implies Q and not Q. When they're both true, which happens to be in row four, then that's a true statement. But in the other three rows, one of them is true and one of them is false. So that and statement is a false statement. And then finally, we have the statement not P, and not P is false in the first two rows and true in the last two rows. And now we can consider the if-then statement, the if-then statement where this is the hypothesis and this is the conclusion. And remember, for an if-then statement, it'll be true whenever the hypothesis is false, which is the first three rows, or when both the hypothesis and the conclusion are true, which happens to be the fourth row. So that if-then statement is true in the first three rows when the hypothesis is false, and it's true in the last row when the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. So that means you can now conclude that, that P implies Q and not Q, is logically implying not P. There we go. And that is the end of chapter nine. Good work, everyone.